Okay, so this is my full review of the all new Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. This is everything you need to know before you get on your way to buy this guy here. Let's go ahead and jump in. As always, let's go ahead and start off from the beginning, right? Starting off with the design. And I'm sure that by now you've seen this guy either in store or, you know, on the internet, all over the internet, especially, especially given the amount of hype that this guy here went through right before the release. It's a brand new model of tablet. That's what it is. So it's kind of the only one in its own category. So this is the first year that this particular model is released in. And even though it is new in many categories, it still keeps a very familiar look, especially to many of us who are already familiar with Samsung flagship tablets, right? So you will find striking similarities between them, you know, hardware wise, except it's been scaled up to size, right? Especially when looking at this monster here and it's gigantic, even to me, right? I'm able to to still hold it like that, but how practical is that, right? So it's not really meant to be a portable tablet that you just whip around as you would do the regular Galaxy Tab S8. So if you were looking for just a regular tablet, stay away from this guy. It's not for you. Go buy yourself the Galaxy Tab S8 or at most go for the Tab S8 Plus. This guy here is huge. The display alone is pushing a whopping 14.6 inches. And interestingly enough, it is one of the thinnest tablet you will find out there, standing at barely 5.5 millimeters thick. And to put that into perspective, it is actually thinner than either the Galaxy Tab S8, the regular one, or even the Galaxy Tab S8 Plus. But despite that size, it only pushes out 1.6 pounds in terms of weight, right? So still kind of heavy, but given the size, given how huge it is, you would actually expect this to be heavier than what it actually weights. Now it does feel pretty solid and dense and at the same time, extremely, extremely premium. Some external features worth mentioning here and I wanna start off with the speakers because this is one of the one of my favorite things about this tablet here. The squad setup speaker tuned by AKG. Like I did mention in my first impressions video, the sound here, the volume is loud, not just randomly loud, but loud in a good way. Very crisp sound, very clean sound. So truly enjoyable. We have a power button, volume rocker, USB type C port, of course, and that's for charging and data transfer. It does push out video signal, so you can use this guy here to actually extend your display and its content. There is a micro SD card here for you to be able to expand the internal storage. The unit that I have here is 256 gigs, but is expandable at up to one terabyte using a micro SD card. Now around the tablet itself, you do have have a bunch of mics all over the place as you would imagine you know video calling is just something of today's right that's just our new normal and having mics all around the tablet is very crucial so that you the sound that it picks up is very clean for the other party and also for yourself for a better user experience. Now, unlike on the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8, we don't have a physical fingerprint sensor here to unlock the tablet, but instead we do have an under display sensor. So more of an optical fingerprint scanner, you know, under the display there. And it does work pretty well. I personally, and I've said this a million times, I personally prefer physical fingerprint sensors, but like I said, this one does work pretty well. You also do have a couple other ways to unlock the tablet, right? So you can use a password if you want, or you can simply use the face recognition. But those are kind of finicky, so I usually just go for the optical fingerprint sensor. It is a unibody build, and according to Samsung, it's actually made out of armor, aluminum, according to them, which I'm assuming means that it makes it a lot more resistant to scratches or, you know, other hard conditions. Overall, it does look and feel good, right? Extremely premium. Very dense, like I mentioned earlier, with that brushed finish on the back of the tablet. And on that same back of the tablet, we do have the main camera module, right? Which contains a 13 megapixel wide and a six megapixel ultra wide sensor. And surprisingly, actually take very, very good pictures for a tablet, right? Very, very good picture. I was, I'm still impressed. And that also goes for the cameras up front. Up front there, you have two sensors and they are both 12 megapixels. And just like the main camera, picture quality is pretty good. On top of that, there is an additional feature called auto framing where the camera automatically adjusts and keeps everyone focused within the frame. And by the way, if this is your first 
first time visiting, welcome to the channel. Of course, I'm certainly hoping that you are liking the content so far, which if you are, please do me a favor, hit both the like and the subscribe button there. I truly appreciate that. But anyway, so let's jump into the meat of things here and cover internal specs and performance, starting up with the chipset itself. Just like its other, you know, siblings, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra is boasting a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which is a super powerful chip. And that can be supported with an 8, 12, or 16 gigs of RAM as far as the configurations go. And like I mentioned, mine here is a 256 gigs of internal storage, which is then matched with 12 gigs of RAM. So it is built, this monster here is built for productivity. So just based off of those specs, you can already imagine that it was meant to be used for high level of productivity. And so far it has done just that. Performance has been out of this world. Literally, I have encountered not a single hiccup using this tablet over the past month or so. You have Android 12 loaded on the device right out of the box, along with One UI 4.1 sitting on top of that. So the general usage of the tablet has shown really nothing but high levels of performance. It is extremely fluid from low to super high level of productivity without missing a beat. Multitasking here is a breeze, of course, as always, as it's always been the case with Samsung flagship tablets, especially if you're using Samsung DeX, right? So you have to imagine they built something this large to kind of mirror what you would get from a laptop. Then you couple that with Samsung DeX, which would turn the UI, the user interface, to have it mimic that of a desktop or a laptop. It's pretty much a complete package, right? So if you have the keyboard, like I do have it, and you attach it to it and switch over to Samsung Samsung DeX, that is literally a laptop. So if you are looking for a laptop replacement or at least something that comes extremely close to a laptop, this is pretty much it. Nothing else is gonna come this close to a laptop. This same size also attracts professional artists. You know, a canvas as large as what is being offered on the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra is nothing but a professional artist's dream. It is super comfortable, not only to take down notes, but also to draw, right? And speaking of taking down notes, the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra, just like it is the case with the Tab S8 and the Tab S8 Plus, does come with a Samsung S Pen. And this S Pen here, it's essentially mirrors everything that the Galaxy Tab S8 Plus's S Pen does, right? So in terms of first latency, a whopping 2.8 millisecond latency, that is near zero latency. It's literally like writing with an actual ink pen, right? So if you're writing with a pen on a piece of paper, it is essentially that user experience that you get out of the S Pen that comes with the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. And that near zero latency has been praised by so many. It is a major, major upgrade. Samsung is always pushing boundaries and that is really something they should be praised for. And of course, if you are at all familiar with Samsung S Pens, then you would know that it is simply excellent on here. And as I said it earlier, taking down notes or drawing on this just beautiful screen is just something else. It comes with a ton of features, just like it was the case with the previous one. And one thing to note here is that for artists, you know, who do like drawings and things like that, you can actually use your phone as a color palette during your editing or during your drawings. And to me, that's just a very cool feature. And another way that Samsung is showing that they are pushing boundaries when it comes down to just their ecosystem, right? They're trying to make sure that the continuity is super solid by adding things like that. Now, in terms of just accessibility and and productivity itself, the combo of what One UI 4.1 has to offer, along with the actual flagship specs of the tablet, as I listed earlier, you know, so the CPU, the GPU performance, you are certainly bound to experience something that is not offered by many tablets out there. Again, very fluid, high level of productivity will be just fine here, built for productivity. And again, because of that, you may find some annoyance as I mentioned, specific to just the size of the tablet itself, if you were looking for just a regular size tablet and you ended up buying this, it is not very portable. Trust me when I say this, it's not very portable. So that's kind of one of the downsides of this tablet for people who end up buying this, even though they, you know, let's say they were just looking for a regular tablet and they end up buying this. This is a very targeted tablet. It's targeted to a specific crowd and that crowd absolutely loves what this guy has to offer. Another thing that I noticed with the back cover here is that even though it's relatively firm for the, you know, typical prop up position of the tablet, if you were to, let's say, prop it up in a way where maybe it stands this way and you were to push on the display, 
this is what would happen, right? You would have it open even wide and it would go all the way down. And this is assuming, of course, that you have it sitting on the flat surface, you would experience that. That is something that is pretty annoying. It's just a combination of the weight of the tablet itself being applied on that hinge that is, although firm, not able to handle it when you apply pressure on the display. So if you end up needing to do something on the screen, it needs to be sitting almost flat on the desk or on the surface, whatever the case may be. And again, it's not necessarily the tablet's fault. It's just that the hinge is not firm enough, assuming you went ahead and bought this book cover. Other than that, this has been very smooth at handling pretty much everything I threw at it, right? Including not only video editing, but also gaming. I've been using PowerDirector to test out, you know, video editing on here and it's been great. It truly speaks volumes in terms of just the CPU and also the GPU performance of this guy here, especially on this beautiful display. Right? I'm not sure that I've emphasized this enough. This is a super AMOLED display here. It takes entertainment to another level, right? So if you're in a dark room and you turn this thing on, you're watching something in high definition or 4K, watching 4K videos, it's it's amazing. It is so beautiful. Now, I know some people have been asking, hey, is it pixelated? Is it, you know, because of the aspect ratio and also the fact that this is such a wide display and that the PPI is slightly lower than what you have on the Galaxy Tab S8 Plus, for example, which by the way also does have a super AMOLED display. Is it pixelated? Is it weird? Does it look this? Does it look? No, it does not. None of that here. It's a fantastic display. You will see that or you will hear that from pretty much every YouTuber that talks about the display. It is a beautiful display. And I'm not sure if I mentioned the resolution earlier. Like I said, it's a 14.6 inches display. So that's the size. So unusually high display and the resolution is 1848 by 2960. And it does support HDR10 plus along with a high refresh rate here at 120 hertz. So. Everything is smooth on here, right? High refresh rate, super smooth here. It enhances your user experience. Smooth gaming also, right? So when you're playing Call of Duty or PUBG Mobile or, you know, Asphalt 9, Call of Duty, like I mentioned, oh, it's super clean. You could put, you know, all of the settings to the highest and, you know, really get immersed into that gaming experience. It's a massive battery, but it is made for a massive size tablet also. So even though it is loaded with a gigantic battery at a whopping 11,200 milliamp power, that doesn't mean that it will last forever, right? So it's, I'm gonna say that it's right above average, but just hearing the size of the battery, 11,200 milliamp, you might think, oh, this is like the eight days battery. No, it's still gonna last an all day, you know, to a power user, it will still last all day. But it, of course, as always, will depend on your type of usage. It's a good battery, that's what I'm gonna say. Based off of the size, you might think it's an amazing battery. It's not a bad battery. I'm just gonna say it's slightly above average, at least so far with my type of usage. And it is also fast charge capable at up to 45 watts. So my advice is if you have a way of picking up the 45 watt charger, I'll say go for it. It's really handy. It comes in handy because it's a large tablet. It might take a while to charge it all the way up if you just have like a basic 15 watt charger. So pick up something like a 45 watt charger, at least a 25 watt charger in order for you to be able to push this up. Well, it does come with one in order for you to push this up fast, right? But anyway, so that's just my take. Oh, the last thing I want to mention here is that the newer generation devices, you know, made by Samsung, especially these flagship devices. So the S8, the S22 for the phone, all of that now will be eligible for four major updates, right? So you would have four major OS updates and you have five years of security updates or security patches, which is a very, very good thing to keep in mind if you are in the market for this guy here. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here. Let me know what you think of this. I'm certainly hoping that this was informative and that if you are in the market for this guy here, this will help your purchasing decision. Let me know with your questions in the comment section. Make sure to, of course, like, comment, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Share the video with anyone you know would be interested in. I will catch you in the comment section. Like I mentioned, I'm also going to catch you in the next video. And up until that next video, of course, as always, stay safe out there.